We were just napping. Oh, can you help me check his diaper? Welcome back to the Proven Grounds. It is with my greatest privilege and honor to introduce the newest member of my family, Bill. Oh, I never thought I could feel so much joy. It's just so beautiful. Well. I think it's time we say goodbye to this old GT45, which is starting to get a little smoky. A little 69 millimeter turbo going away because it's time for brand new 78, 75 billet wheel. Oh man, the excitement is overwhelming. So let's get this puppy in there. All right, so there should be a pretty direct replacement um, it's the same flange, it's a T4 flange. It should be the same uh, V-band for the downpipe. I imagine the charge side should also fit up pretty similarly. There's only one way to find out. So we got the old GT45 here. A little tired, but still in good shape. Um, I think it was getting a little, little smoky. And it's a little undersized uh, for what I was trying to do with Tater. And I think it was getting a decent amount of exhaust restriction, back pressure, because this turbine housing, hot side housing, was a little small. But you can see the little baby compressor wheel on the GT45 compared to the new 7875. Quite a bit more flow on that puppy. Um, also, this is a billet wheel, which is really nice. And then if we take a look at The rear, you can see we got a lot more exhaust flow out of the new 7875 than we had on the GT45. All right, folks, she's in. It was definitely a lot of things that didn't line up the same as the old turbo, but that's what you kind of got to expect. I was kind of wishing it was going to be just like a bolt-in direct replacement, but I did have to modify some few, a few things. Um, my exhaust flange here was not the same for this turbo housing. And other than that, that honestly, I guess that was probably about it. <laughs> um, it really didn't go too bad. And it looks amazing. Size comparison here. Uh, it's a significantly larger opening. So I think we're going to make some steam with this puppy. So I'm going to go ahead and get the turbo primed by turning it over without starting the engine. Uh, I'm going to do that for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then I'm going to fire it up and let it idle, and we'll get to hear what it sounds like.
jacket that was vibrating a little bit yesterday. Now we're gonna go get the beans just a little bit. This new party whistle definitely made a big difference. Uh, it's making boost faster and it's holding boost longer. So it used to kind of dip off um, up in higher RPMs and like fourth gear. You could kind of feel it start to taper and then you'd look at the log and you would see that it actually had started to taper down, which kind of meant I was running out of turbo and it was probably having too much back pressure. Definitely seemed like there was too much back pressure in the exhaust. Um, and so this one definitely flows way better. Uh, my butt dyno tells me that it's making more power and I'm going to try to get it on the dyno pretty soon so we can find out what it's making. Unfortunately, I didn't have a dyno with the old turbo on it, but better late than never, right? So one of the things I'm probably going to have to modify is the charge pipe. Uh, where it lined up with the old one is a little bit well, it's a little bit further back. The turbo's a little bit further back now. And I'm probably gonna have to modify the end of this. You can see it's kind of, there's a little lump there. Uh, it's not exactly lined up perfect. So I'm gonna modify that. And I got a new coupler to go on here that'll look a little bit better than this old piece of crap. And then as I had mentioned, uh, there's a mount down here, which is really hard to see on camera. Um, but basically it mounts to where my old where there used to be the AC compressor. Uh, I just have a bracket I built that mounts on there and then mounts up to the T4 flange and holds this thing really solid. Um, and so that was vibrating against a band clamp. So I just took and, and notched it out and then welded back in this little, basically hump, <laughs> inverted hump to uh, give that clearance. No more problem with that. It's not vibrating and making a bunch of crazy noise anymore. And it's, it's just ripping. So we're gonna go take a look at the log and compare it to the logs from the old turbo and see what kind of differences there are uh, outside of just my butt dyno. All right, so to get a little bit nerdy, we're gonna take a look at this data log. And this data log is the run that I made the last time I was at the strip. I ran a 10.8 at 136 miles an hour. And so you can see getting on the two-step at the launch, bogging on the launch, <laughs> and then short shifting every gear. This was 5,800 RPMs, 6,100 RPMs, 6,300, and then I uh, got through the big end at 66.5. And my rev limiter set at 7,200, so I wasn't even close. Definitely should have ran a lot faster, but still did pretty good. I got into the tens. That was my goal. But what we want to look at here is this curve here is my boost. And you can see in first gear we hit 11.8 pounds, second gear 14 and a half, 15.2 in third gear, and then peaked out at 15.8 in fourth gear. But in each gear you can see it's tapering. And I think that was caused by too much back pressure in the exhaust and then at higher RPMs. <laughs> 
it, the turbo just couldn't keep up. So if we take a look at the log from that drive that we just took, it's not that great of a comparison because I'm not at the drag strip, but it's good enough to show me what I wanted to see. So as you can see, this green line is my foot all over the place on the pedal because I got on the two-step and it just started smoking the tires, shifted in a second, smoking the tires, no lift shifted into third, smoked the tires again, and then so I put it in fourth, and then as you can see, I just kind of tapered into it and never actually got to full throttle. I got to 90, 98% or 94% in fourth gear. But in that fourth gear pull, you can see a steady incline and boost. And then as it goes up in RPMs, the boost actually kind of creeps up from 12.4, which is where it probably should be, um, because that's what my wastegate spring is, up to a max of 13.5. So this tells me two things. Uh, the new turbo is not running out of boost. It's not having a back pressure problem. Um, but it also is starting to creep in fourth gear on a, on a hard pull. So that's something else I'm probably going to have to deal with, you know, a little bit down the road. I might have to add a bigger wastegate or add another wastegate um, just to control that boost level better. But as of right now, I kind of like it tapering up a little bit. So I'm going to take it to the strip anyway and just give her the beans and see what happens. All right, the party whistle's on and it likes to party. Make sure you guys stick around though, because pretty soon we're going back to the drag strip to try to get into the nines and we're going to get on the dyno and I can't wait to see what this thing lays down. So make sure you like and subscribe if you guys want to see some more and leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see. But until next time, thanks for watching. For Odin's Garage.